Hey everybody, thanks for joining me in my next video. As you can see, I've changed a little bit of things around here and I'm just gonna try this out for a while. If you like it, let me know in the comments. If you don't, let me know down in the comments so I can make whatever changes would be easier for you guys to follow. Okay, so today we're gonna talk about the situation in Ukraine. <music> So I thought I would talk about this mainly because there is so much going on out there. There's so much being said about it. And basically here's how I look at it. This is not, this is not new. It's happened before. Every time we, we have a weak president, Russia goes after Ukraine. It usually happens either we step in or Germany does. And then the whole thing just gets stopped. Um, I don't know what's going to happen this time. There are some new elements such as uh, the ability to cut off everybody in Russia from being able to use their bank accounts and things like that. Um, <clears throat> I read this article that you can see over here. It says the White House requested Thursday that $10 billion in emergency defense and humanitarian aid for the Ukraine conflict be linked to the larger omnibus spending bill up from 6.4 billion in aid just a few days ago. Um, and then Biden also wants another 22.4 billion in coronavirus aid to develop new testing, therapies, and vaccines to fight future variants of the virus. Okay, so I'm gonna address a few things. Because this has happened before, I'm not very worried about it. I pretty much know how it's gonna play out, even with these new, um, situations going on uh we cannot we literally cannot afford to be helping other countries our country is in dire straits well not dire straits but our country is in need of serious um money <laughs> adjustment basically it needs to get on a, a real budget not just a budget of we're going to spend this so print this but a real budget of what can we actually afford to do because we are so far in debt that it's just crazy. Um, I think the people around Ukraine should help Ukraine and America should stay out of it. Um, <clears throat> just because literally if you're bleeding, you can't help somebody else that well, or if, if at all. And so that's where I'm at with that. I don't think we should be doing this and that's why. Uh, a lot of Christians are like, this is the coming of the, this is, we're in the, uh, we're in the end times, right? Um, we are always in the end times. After Jesus ascended, we were in the end times. Ever since then, there have been wars and rumors of wars. Uh, there have been calamities and everything else because the earth has been waiting for him to return. And his people do too. What we as Christians are supposed to do during whatever, whatever is going on is he is supposed to find us working. So we are supposed to be proselytizing people, which basically means going out and telling them the good news. We're supposed to be living our lives correctly. We're supposed to be supporting godly things. We're supposed to be developing the church. We are not supposed to be worried about, excuse me, the, this idea that he's going to come back and it's going to be tomorrow. Or it's going to be next year or two years from now. No one knows, not even, it says in the Bible that not even Jesus knows what time God is going to say, okay, it's time to do this. All right. So we are not to worry about it. Be faithful and looking, be understanding that this is going to happen, but not worried, not sitting around going, well, he's going to be here, here, here and there and here and there. And this is a sign of the end times. And this is a sign, this is a sign, this is a sign. If you think it's a sign of the end times, you're right. It probably is. Because ever since Jesus ascended, we have been in the end times. Okay, so I don't, I don't, I'm not worried about it. I don't even think about it, really. I just understand I am living in the end times. So what the end times means is wars and rumors of wars, uh, natural, natural calamities, and that his people will be persecuted in whatever way. And that's just the way it is. <clears throat> So that's what I think. I also think it's possible that this Ukraine thing is just, it's a, it's a distraction from other things. If you look at the stuff that's happening, I mean, tanks are running out of gas and people are able to take tractors and trucks and haul them away. 
that I saw a video of a guy sit in front of a, a tank and the tank just stopped. I mean, that's not really war. If you ever think about war, they run people over. Uh, they don't run out of gas, they take yours. You know what I'm saying? So there's something a little bit up with that and I don't know what it is and I have no idea, you know, exactly what's happening as far as that goes. That's just one of the things that I've seen before and why I don't ever worry about it. Because either Russia always goes in super unprepared or it's never really going to happen where they're going to take it over. I am a bit disturbed with the idea that you can just shut, you, an outside country, can just shut down another country's ability to trade money and people's ability to feed themselves and things like that. I am disturbed by that. Uh, a lot of people would say, yay, it's a good thing because then we're teaching Russia a lesson and it's our job to teach Russia a lesson. Well, you can disagree with what someone is doing and you cannot support them in your own way you can pull your money out like I'm, the, I'm, I'm not really so much uh, upset about the sanctions as I am this idea that every single person in Russia their bank account is dead they can't use it and it all and across the world money is digital okay because people have left the idea that cash is king they think it's fine to be digital and that's where it needs to be if anything, this has, this idea here has just really, really, I think it's a way that people are going to use an example. How's that? They're going to use this as an example for the social credit thing that everybody's talking about. <clears throat> I think they're going to say, look, it's good because whenever you do something wrong, we can just immediately correct you by restricting your ability to eat or whatever. Well, I mean, guys, that basically puts us in a prison. Not, not, we're not free. We don't start free. We start in prison where somebody else actually has control of our money. Um, <clears throat> I'm obviously not in favor of that. Uh, cash is king for a reason, and I might have to just make a video about that just to put it out there. Why cash is king. Um, but that's where I'm at with this. Again, I'm not too worried about it. I, uh... I think it'll have some far-reaching effects. Another thing I just thought of is like, because of this, our gas prices are now high. Uh, I, I admit I don't really understand that, but it did happen the last three or four times that Russia did this, and then the gas prices came back down because Russia didn't get Ukraine and stopped. So for me, things like this is always just a reiteration of you need to be as independent as possible. You need to have your own garden. You need to have your own ability to do your own thing as much as you can, apart from what these crazy governments do. We, as just a, just a person like just me, I'm very dependent on gasoline because I don't like to live in cities. I prefer like the country, things like that. Um, so obviously I would need gas to get in anywhere. Uh, I would just encourage you guys to think about maybe doing something else uh, maybe um, carpooling or something you know I don't I don't really know I just know that this kind of stuff makes me makes me want to pull my family closer and you know make sure we all have what we need and be able to help each other with our cash <laughs> with our gardens with our whatever you know kind of animal maybe that we can right off with you know i don't know i also kind of think that this is all going to blow over our gas is going to go down again everybody's going to go back down to normal but that they're setting they're setting the stage for this sort of idea that governments and businesses you know not just this but everything this past five six years has been setting the stage of like maybe even ten of like this idea of well a business should be able to police you morally uh, a country should be able to police you morally a uh, government should be able to police you morally and you know maybe there's a middle ground for that as far as putting somebody in jail or the death penalty for certain things but in general that's a no okay uh, I think 
we as a people really already know what that middle ground is, you know, no lying, no stealing, no, no raping or murdering. <laughs> and then after that, I, I guess there's nuance. I'm not sure, but <clears throat> that's just where I'm at with that. I'm not afraid of what's going on. Uh, it to me just reinforces more of what I already think. And I know it's going to blow over. I was in March or March, April. By May, we won't be here again. That's my prediction. We'll see. We'll see. But that's what I think. In May, we won't be here anymore. It's not going to be a thing. Our gas prices are going to go down. So I don't know by how much, but that's what I think. We'll see. Uh, thanks, guys, for joining me. Let me know what you think in the comments. What are you what are you afraid of any of this? Do you think any of this how how else is this going to affect us? You let me know, okay? Remember to pray and read your Bible. Don't worry, guys. Just stick stick with it with your friends and family. Stay close to each other, okay? And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.